Hi guys, Dane here, and today I am going to be doing the bookish booking book tag. Jesus Christ, can't believe I actually got that right first time. This was created by Becca Awesome Bookner, and I was tagged by Damien Tariquez, so thank you Damien. Here is a stack of books I have prepared, and yeah, I'll have all the stuff in the description below and whatnot. There is a selection of questions, and I'm going to tag some people at the end. You know how book tags work by now. Alright, question number one. What is a well-loved book that you hated? You probably just saw this on the top of my pile. Uh, it was A Monster Calls by Patrick Ness. It's not that I hated it, I just didn't think it was very good. I think I gave it maybe a 3 or a 3.5 in the end. To be honest, if I hate a book, I just don't finish reading it. This one it was okay, I thought it was very overhyped. I also felt... It's, it's just one of those books, it annoys me when a book has clearly been written in an attempt to like manipulate you emotionally and it feels like that this was very much that. I did like the concept, I just didn't think it was very well executed. I'm sorry. However, I do want to give Patrick Ness another go in the future because some of his sort of fantasy stuff sounds interesting, so. Question number two, what is a guilty pleasure book? Uh, I don't really do guilty pleasures. I guess the closest thing I've got for this is Cassandra Clare, and this is Clockwork Angel, which I'm going to be reading in April with a bunch of other booktubers, Damien Tariquez actually, and then Lisa West Coast Reads, Kit Kats Can Read, and Sophisticated Books. And, I don't know, I just, I think Cassandra Clare is, cons she's looked down upon by a lot of people. I almost feel as though some of my sort of more alternative booktuber friends potentially look down on me a little bit for reading this, because, you know, it's what the popular kids read and all this stuff, I guess, I don't know. I'm mainly reading it just to just to see what the fuss is about, you know. It's, it's readable, it's not awful. It's not as bad as A Monster Calls, I'd rather... <laughs> Sorry everybody who loves that book. That's Catalyst Reed's favourite book, I think, as well. Question number three, have you ever spoiled a book for someone? If so, which book? Now, I guess the answer to this is probably, I can't think of any specific examples. I do put like spoiler alerts on my review videos, but it's possible that people watch them anyway and then get spoiled and don't really care. I don't know. I, I, I don't really get the, the, the deal with spoilers. I mean, sure, you'd rather avoid knowing them, I guess, but it's not the end of the world if you do. Question number four, what book made you ugly cry? I've only ever cried once to a book, and that was to The Amber Spyglass by Philip Pullman. This is the last book of the His Dark Materials trilogy. I read it pretty much as soon as it came out, so I was about 12. And the ending of it, man, it just broke my little heart. Question number five, what is your latest DNF? I believe my latest DNF is Tithe by Holly Black, which I was going to be buddy reading with Missy from Binge Reader, and it was so bad. Question number six, which book have you read due to controversy? I haven't got anything for this, I'm afraid. Uh, I, I don't know, I've read controversial books, but I haven't read them because of their controversy. I can't think of a single one, sorry. Question number seven, have you read a book where you question the author's sanity? Yes. I don't know if I could name any specific ones. There was a really bad book of poetry called Exotic Neurotic by Kenneth Singleton and I gave it like a, a, a two stars I think review and then he basically lost his shit and started like posting negative reviews on my books and stuff but it was very bad poetry but it was also quite disturbing. But I like disturbing, I just like good disturbing, and this this was not it. Anything William Burroughs wrote, you, you, you wonder about him sometimes. <laughs> Question number eight, what is the most cringeworthy book you've read? Ah, that would be Rosie Ringstar Making It Happen by Janet Rosina West. And this was one that I've mentioned before in a previous video. It was one of the first books I was sent when I started up my book blog. It's basically about this girl who ice skates. Question number nine, what book have you read solely due to the cover? Again, I haven't got one. Uh, I... I no, I haven't got one, to be honest. There may be the occasional book that I was already planning on, you know, I was already looking out for. So, I can't even give an example of that, but say I'm here and I'm like, oh, I've never read any... I've never read any Daphne du Maurier, actually, and I have picked up a few of her books. But say I saw a really beautiful cover for Rebecca or something, I'd probably pick that out and make it a priority, I guess. Question number 10, name a book you're embarrassed to admit you've read. This is Amsterdam Lessons by Sylvia Hadfield. This is by U Star Novels. So this is an erotic thriller in which I am a character. Let me read you. Let me re I'm trying to find a sexy bit. Where's a sexy bit? I think I'm having a threesome here. 
While Stain began stroking the backs of her knees, one of her most sensitive spots, Adrian had come onto the bed, cupping her magnificent breasts and toying with her aroused extended nipples. In response, Emily let out a little moan of pleasure. I think Emily might have been a name that I provided for some girl I was chatting up at the time. Dane's hands encircled each of her legs as he gently rubbed his thumbs up and down the front of her thighs, the four fingers of each hand tracing their way along the muscles at the back. <laughs> I've just seen how this paragraph ends. Emily could feel her skin puckering into goosebumps of sensual pleasure as he moved his hands around. His thumbs now rested on the outer thigh, his fingers on her inner thigh. Moving up and down the inside of her thighs, his fingers circled and fell, only to rise again to the fleshy tops, the guardians to the gate of her quim. <laughs> quim. Who uses quim in a sexy book? You can't use quim. as a, It's not a sexy word. Quim. Jesus, I haven't heard that for ages. I haven't heard that since I've read this book. By the way, this is based on a true story, of course, as well. Question number 11. Name an unknown book you wish more people know of. Now, this isn't totally unknown because I have seen a, a pretty nice review of this on Todd the Librarian's channel recently. But I do wish that more people knew of this. Because every time I mention it, somebody's like, oh, I didn't know you wrote books. So that's why I keep mentioning it. So this is Driven by Dane Cobain. And this is Lightfold Book One. It's the first book of a series of kind of quirky detective novels that I've been working on. And you should buy it, probably. I say that totally unbiased. Question number 12, name a favorite villain. For some reason, the dude that came into my head, I can't even remember his name now, is it John? John Rainwater from Firestarter by Stephen King. He's like this American Indian guy who fought in Vietnam and got his face scarred. And he's intense, but he's a good bad guy because he's also, you get what motivates him, you know. Question number 13, name a book you enjoyed that you read that is outside the norm of a genre that you usually read. I've got nothing again, guys. I, I have no normal genre that I read. I don't have any genres that I do or don't normally read. I just pick stuff up. Question number 14. Name tropes you actually enjoy reading. Uh, <laughs> I don't know how many of them there are. The, the, the best I could come up with this is like drug books. Drugs in which like people are on heroin and meth and stuff. I, I just can't get enough of drug books. Like <laughs> I don't know why. I haven't read any for a while, actually. The last good one that I read was probably Junk by Melvin Burgess, and that's actually quite an old book. I just only read it a year ago. I don't know. Let me know of any drug books below. I do have uh, Nikki Six's Heroin Diaries over there, but I don't like Nikki Six as a person, so... Yeah. And question number 15. What slash who inspired you to join BookTube? This would be my buddy Todd the Librarian. Because... Basically, I used to make booktube videos on a, my book blogs channel and never really took it too seriously. And basically, Todd came out of nowhere and commented on one of my videos on my main channel. I think I'd, I think I just uploaded a haul there or something like that, that I'd also uploaded to my other channel. And I really appreciated it, and so I started watching his videos because there's lots of kind of smaller booktubers that I'd watched in the past, but that never kind of bothered to reach out to me, I guess. So fair play to you for doing that, Todd, because you know you didn't have to. And yeah, it just inspired me to take the leap, and now I'm here. Alright, and unofficial question number 16, because it's not on here, but I'm going to tag some people anyway. Who do you tag? I'm going to tag Novel Crawler, Sophisticated Books, and Catalyst Reads. And I encourage you to check out all three of their channels if you haven't already. So there we go, that is the bookish booking book tag. Do you notice me sneakily look to the right every now and then when I'm like, what do my notes say? And uh, yeah, it was quite a lot of fun actually. So hopefully you enjoyed it. Hit that like button if you have. Let me know in the comments if you've read any of these books. Hit subscribe if you're new here and I'll see you soon for another bookish video. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.